The last type of lighting to talk about is specular. So it's defined similarly to the other types of lighting with the word specular in a color. It also works with a property called sh uh, shininess, which we'll go over in a few moments. So specular reflections are mirror-like. So to illustrate that, we have a directional light that's pointed directly at these uh, faces. And we'll look directly at them. It's based on viewing angle, and we're in perspective here, so this has different color than that one. We look direct, move over this way, then we see the light being the brightest. When we're looking dead on, you can imagine these light rays bouncing off of this and then coming back at our eyes. And then as we turn away from that, we see it go from uh, gray to black. Let's look about 45 degrees onto this face and then rotate this light to be about 45 degrees. And then you can imagine these light rays bouncing off there and then coming at our eyes. And again, it's like a mirror. So let's go ahead and turn that back to 180 degrees, pointing directly at those faces again. Uh, it does not actually, although I say it's like a mirror, it does not actually reflect anything in the scene. It's purely colors at the vertices that get interpolated, but it displays that property of a mirror. It's a lot faster, of course, and also possible to do on the iPhone um, than having to worry about geometry being reflected. It's just a hack, a fake, but you know it can it can uh, look cool. So. That's why it's in there. Okay, we'll talk about the shininess component next. So shininess makes the faces, or the vertices, of course, more and more mirror-like as you increase the value up to one, which means that we're only getting reflections over a small area of the mesh when it's all the way up, and as we turn it down, it becomes less like a mirror in that we are getting the effect from more angles of, of view, and uh, so we see more, more specular highlight, I guess, uh, but it doesn't equate to being more shiny. Uh, so it might work backwards to how you expect it to work. It does not give you more of an effect as you increase the slider. It just makes it behave more realistic to a mirror-like surface. So how does the shininess value work? Well, it's an exponent. So if you have some gray values that are between 0 and 1, as you use greater and greater positive numbers, then the values will become smaller. That's just a property of uh, numbers between 0 and 1. If you had a highlight that actually had the color 1, it wouldn't get any darker, but anything that's gray will exhibit some change. And if you take the slider all the way down to 0, then if you have the light hitting the surface at all, then it's getting some sort of specular reflection value, and then you're raising that to zero, which makes the value one, which means that you're going to get white in all cases but where it was zero. That's how this is defined here. Is I guess zero to the power of zero happens to be zero in this implementation. So the value of zero, as you can imagine, is pretty useless. So I believe most of the built-in shaders use 0 0.01. You can tweak this to whatever you think will be useful for you. But now if we reduce the shininess value all the way, then at least it's we're getting some we're going to be able to get some variation. Um, it almost looks like a more terrible version of diffuse lighting on the spheres. And we are able to, I mean, it doesn't look like we're having any variation, but it, w it is actually calculating that. And we can see that on a mesh where the normals don't line up with the faces. So on this smooth cube, as we move around it, it doesn't, it doesn't match diffuse lighting. We are getting changes based on the viewing angle, as you see. Um, it's not exactly useful, but it does illustrate that something's happening. So you probably want to, in general, use a slightly higher value uh, for shininess, and spe the, you also don't want to have you know smooth shading on hard edges, as I went over in the diffuse um, video. So let's turn that back all the way down to 0 0.01, and let's look at what's happening with this hard-edged cube. This is the default Unity cube. It's not any, anything weird that I made, but you can see some flickering on top. We see this face is black, and this face is getting other values than black, despite the fact that it should be pointing in the same direction to the light, um, you know, 90 degrees off axis to the light. 
Well, there's just some some error that happens, I guess, and you can eliminate that by using shininess values that just aren't too low. So here's a pretty, you know, still a pretty low value, and we're getting, you know, specular highlights, but we're not getting... Oh, there, okay, so on the side it fixed it, but that's still not quite enough for the top. So let's go ahead and increase that even a little bit more. It's still happening. Um, there's I mean, there's still specular calculations. They're just being multiplied by a smaller value now, so you're just not seeing that effect happening. So it's just, you know, another hack to try to tame that down.